Oh hey guys, uh, Douglas Hill here with Remax. Uh, today we're going to work on two doors and we have three options for you. Stick around and uh, let me show you a couple of more tips and uh, uh, we'll get this thing done. This is a Masonite two panel door. Got a lower panel and then an upper panel. Um, it is kind of a custom door. It does have wood grain. The lady of the house just got an estimate from a professional carpenter who I respect. Uh, $300 deposit, $300 when completed to install just the panel and paint the panel two coats of paint. So the only problem is this contractor is booked up for three weeks and these doors would be back ordered for two weeks. So uh, the lady of the house has guests coming in three days and she asked me to show her some options. So that's what we're here to do. Uh, first option, without seeing the door, I got a couple of these little stick-on doorknob shields. This one is too small. This one is too big. Uh, it might look good on some houses or on a wall behind the door, but not on the door, so we're not going to go with this method. Especially not in a million dollar house. This is like 5,600 square feet. And so you got to do the best you can with what you got. Uh, the other option, which I talked about earlier, is the door would be back ordered for two weeks. So the carpenter can't get that job, can't get it done in her time frame. There is one method we can do in her time frame, and that is to leave the existing door where it is, leave it on its hinges, and repair this. Now, to prevent this from happening again, there's another door to the bathroom here that has a stop located on the door, and I'll show you that in a minute. And that's also pushed through the door. So we need to get rid of that system and put a door stop through the ceramic tile on the floor, and that should keep the door from colliding with this door. So let's get busy. Okay, so this is the entry door to the bathroom, and you can see uh, they got the wrong kind of stop in here. It's already gone through this door. Uh, we can get this patched, so we're basically salvaging two doors. Um, so what we want to do is remove this pin and take, take out this door stop. Okay, you just toss this. Has little or no value. While we're here, we want to prepare this surface. Make sure it's nice and smooth. We're going to cut out some loose chunks. Okay, that one's ready to go. Now, in an earlier video, you saw me use this big gap filler. This is not a very big gap, but uh, this is all I have on hand. This is enough product for probably half a dozen doors. So this is like seven or eight dollars. And the Bondo is probably like five dollars. You get six door patches out of it, you save several hundred dollars. So you got to shake this stuff up really well. Now it's overkill, but we'll take care of that. Okay, let's get to the other patch. We'll let this dry, then we'll come back and I'll show you how to cut that away. Okay, on this larger hole, what we want to try and do is save this piece. And just in case the homeowner does not have this exact paint, 
in their garage or in their shed. This can be taken to Home Depot or Lowe's and they'll cut or, color match it perfectly. So we're gonna take this out and it looks like they glued something on here at some point in time. We'll sand all this down and get it ready. Got it. So if you look at this stuff, it's uh, I would say it's about as thin as a is a is a uh, a cracker. So, but it's much stronger than a cracker. But you know, you can punch through it. Okay, that's very good. So, now we just shake up the big gap filler. And uh, after I get done here, I'm going to uh, happy hour and uh, have my favorite uh, beverage mixed up. Oh, I know what I want to do. A uh, little tip, I just have a business card here. I'm just going to jam this down here, keep it from sagging. Okay. Okay, this should continue to expand. It's better to have too much than too little, so. Well, the foam was set up overnight, and the purpose was to definitely overdo it, but uh, it keeps on expanding for quite some time. But we're gonna cut that out now. Just take a minute. And we're gonna, we're gonna try a different uh, thing here. We're gonna take the blade off this hacksaw and we're going to cut through this and we're going to put a little bit of a curve on it right here we're going to kind of scoop it out make it deep and just saw it right off Okay, it seems like a lot of waste, but all right. Next, we want to uh, 
Get the excess off. up some Bondo. Uh, you can get this stuff at an auto parts place. You can get it at uh, Home Depot, at Lowe's, at uh, Harbor Freight even. I've seen it there. Uh, then we're going to add some hardener. I've taken just a small scrap piece of wood Put some more than enough Bondo for this patch and the other door patch. And uh, now I'm going to put the hardener on, on the Bondo. Kind of squeeze it around a little bit, mix it up a little bit before you apply the hardener. And I'm just running, going to run a little bit of hardener down the middle. The more hardener you put in there, the faster it will dry. So I'm just kind of, I don't know, it's just a pattern uh, that I've come up with. Uh, if I'm going to do multiple coats, I may put a little bit more hardener in there. Multiple coats in the same day. Uh, mix it up. Uh, you always want to use a drop cloth when you're working on your home or anybody else's home for that matter. Okay, so based on the color of this Bondo, of the hardener mixed in with the Bondo, it looks like this is going to be drying pretty fast. I've got plenty of time to work with it. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, as soon as I apply this, I may stick around the house and just go play a game of pool. And then come back and sand it down and, and apply a second coat. Take a larger broad knife and just smooth it out. And that's it. Let that set up, let it dry. And then we'll come back and sand it down and apply another coat. I'm also going to hit the uh, other door, uh, but that's basically the same method as I just used. We've put several coats of uh, Bondo on here. And now we're looking for some low spots. I can kind of feel a little bit of a wave here. Maybe you can see the wave. Um, but I, got a, I have a remedy for that after a little bit of sanding. Yeah, there's my low spot. Okay, because this door has uh, a pretty deep grain, just about everywhere there's a grain, every half inch or so. Uh, and it's also semi-gloss, it's not, it's not real shiny like a car fender. Uh, so you probably don't have to take it down that far, a coat of paint will fill in a lot of the gaps. But sometimes, occasionally you have a, a smooth masonite door, and uh, you may want to put a gloss on it. So I have a remedy to make it really smooth. And that is uh, another Bondo product, Glazing and Spot Putty. And it's a, it's a, it's not an epoxy, you don't mix anything with this, you just apply it. And it's a little bit easier to sand. So we're going to do that. Let me see if I want this blade. Or this blade. 
I'm going to go with a larger blade. I don't need that much. Okay, we're just going to drag this. I'll say it's a lot lower than I thought. Put a little more on. that set up and dry. Now that the glazing is dried we're going to sand it down and check for low spots. Like we've got a low spot right here. We'll come back and check on it again in a second. At this point, we're going to go ahead and prime with Kills. This is like an oil base product. It dries really quick. Um, it'll hide this red really good and prepare for a top coat. I just have a, a cheap, probably 15, 20 cent uh, foam brush. Just going to apply some stain killer to it. Okay, we'll let that set up for a while. Okay, so the next step uh, for the best results, we're gonna we're gonna uh, simulate the grain that's in this door, and we're gonna put it on the patch. And what we're gonna do is kind of uh, take a pencil and just trace in some patches where you think that you know it would match up. I mean, here they're about an eighth of an inch away from each other uh, vertically up to a half an inch. So if you just draw in a few of these things, it'll make a huge difference. Uh, it, it will prevent this from being a shiny spot and it will look like the rest of the door. It'll look like a regular wood grain. Okay, so. And it is pretty much random. As long as you break up that shine, I think you're going to be okay. Next, we're going to take a Dremel tool. This is the Dremel Stylo. Uh, very light in my hands. Um, I was actually thinking about using my router, but it's my router requires oh, let's see where requires two hands, and I would have to tilt my head to watch where the bit was going. So it's I, I don't think I would have enough control. Uh, and this little Stylo thing has has several settings. Right now I have, a, have it on low. It's like five speeds. It's, 
but we're going to just work with it on low. We don't want it penetrating too, too deep or too fast. Okay, let's uh, get the paint out and prime it. See what it looks like. Okay, so <clears throat> in between coats of uh, Bondo, I was able to run out to the local paint store and I took that little little patch inside the uh, door, took it right to the, doors, uh, the uh, paint shop and I had them match it. So we'll see how good the, a match they did here. Okay, um, so far I'm really liking that, but we'll, we'll come back when it's dried down. Okay, so here's the area of the patch right here. I took a Dremel tool and simulated the grain all the way across. And there was a little a rub right here and uh, cut into this as well to try to even out the grain. Primed it and then painted it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe.